Long live the crown. Peter Morgan confronts final season rumors, Diana's ghost, prequel buzz and claims of exploiting the royal family. Greetings from Royal Family Lid on my channel. The creator of Netflix's popular Queen Elizabeth U series The Crown, Peter Morgan, is experiencing a royal problem. The sixth and last season of the show will debut in November, but only a small group of people who have promised to remain anonymous have seen it. However, as is typically the case with anything pertaining to the royal family, a scenario in which Prince Charles speaks to a vision of Diana after her death has made its way onto a tabloid. According to a headline on the Daily Mail website, Diana's gay chose to will appear in the Crown's final season. The episode, in which Dominic West's character Charles talks amiably to a fictional Diana, Elizabeth Debicki, in the Royal Plains cabin while he transports her body from Paris to London, is cited in the web post. Diana also makes an appearance to Queen Elizabeth, the mother of Charles, later in the episode, Imelda Staunton. The narrative is published alongside an essay by a royal historian in the print version of the Mail the next morning. The historian criticizes Morgan for straying from the truth and labels the series cruel, farcical, and a sick joke. Just to be clear, there is nothing extraordinary about the princess's posthumous apparition. Morgan states, I never thought of it as Diana's ghost in the conventional sense. She was sustaining her vivid memory in the thoughts of people she had left behind. I guess my inspiration to come up with a distinctive method to represent Diana came from her uniqueness. Narratively, she deserved to be treated differently. Morgan requests to stop talking about the crown 30 minutes into our conversation in London, which is understandable given the recent uproar surrounding the royal family. He would rather discuss anything else, like life or the industry. Morgan sighs hard when I tell him that the sheaf of questions in my lap is virtually completely related to the show. If he needs a moment, I ask. That's not it, he asserts. It's it's. I just find discussing it unpleasant. In my opinion, it is impossible to have a rational discussion on the crown in the UK. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. The 60-year-old showrunner Peter Morgan feels mixed emotions about giving up the program that has shaped the last 10 years of his career and elevated him to a position of great influence in the entertainment industry. The meticulously constructed drama by Morgan was described as the most costly TV show ever when it aired in 2016, with producer Left Bank Pictures allegedly shelling out more than $100 million for the first season alone. Netflix declined to provide an accurate number. For the streamer, which up until that point had been more well-known for purchases like Grey's Anatomy and Breaking Bad, it was a significant risk. A 60-hour biopic about a British octogenarian, directed by a dramatist who specializes in historical tragedies, did not seem like a sure thing at first. Furthermore, Morgan's plan went against the grain of television as The Crown was a six-decade series, meaning he would have to replace the actors every few seasons as the characters grew older. However, the risk paid off, as Netflix secured its first Emmy for Outstanding Drama Series in 2021 and strengthened its position as a leader in original content. The Crown demonstrated that Netflix could rival HBO's ambition and the BBC's level of sophistication. The Crown Jewel, pun intended, as Netflix CEO Ted Sarandos affectionately called the program, was mentioned during the lavish Season 5 premiere in London last November. The last season of The Crown, which spans the years 1997 to 2005, will be divided into two parts, the fine convention. When it releases on November 16, the first half focuses primarily on Diana. The second part of the film, which debuted on December 14, will center once more on Elizabeth and Charles and include the prince's marriage to Olivia Williams' character, Camilla Parker Bowles. Yes, there will be a longer story arc for William played by Rufus Campa in the first part and Ed McVeigh in the second, as they are teenagers dealing with the loss of their mother and their public responsibilities to the royal family. Netflix's chief content officer, Bella Bajaria, promises that the season final will leave audiences in complete awe. Peter performed an incredible job of combining all of these tales and providing us with a profoundly moving conclusion, Bajaria remarks. You truly do get the impression that the Queen's entire reign is being honored. 